as we sometimes find ourselves, we're here today in the Bloodborne Alpha Test. We've spoken about this before, but we've come back one more time just to get some context for today's video. You see, the Bloodborne Alpha Test only has one map, Central Yarnum. So although we're able to use the engine debugging menu to do all sorts of cool things in the Alpha Test, such as take control of and play as enemy creatures, we're limited to just one small portion of the game in which to do this, meaning the amount of fun we can really have here is quite restricted. Returning to the retail version of Bloodborne now, we're not so lucky. The debug menu does not exist in this build of the game, so we're not able to select enemies or take control of them. However, it just so happens that all the code for every debugging feature that would normally be accessed via the menu has been left behind, completely unused in the final product. And instead of using the menu to select enemies, what if we just use the game's lock-on system instead to choose a target? Hello everyone, my name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at a Bloodborne mod I've created which allows you to take control of and play as any enemy creature in the game by simply locking onto them and clicking the L3 button. The way I've built this mod means that enemies you control will still remain part of the enemy team, meaning they won't be hostile towards or able to hurt each other. However, by targeting an enemy and tapping the personal effects button, that enemy will become indiscriminately hostile. This way we can take control of them, and then participate in enemy versus enemy combat. So having access to this feature in the full version of Bloodborne allows us to create a lot of interesting new experiences, taking control of any enemy creature we encounter throughout the entire game, including the old Hunter's expansion pack. Fighting against other enemies is usually fairly one-sided. The attack system isn't really set up in a way that makes most enemies particularly playable with a gamepad, as they're designed to be controlled by a much more comprehensive AI system. But regardless, we can still have a lot of fun experimenting. Some enemies won't actually become hostile until the real player character comes near. So when we're controlling an enemy, we're able to easily approach and defeat them. There are some attacks such as the Brain Sucker's Stun and Grab, which only work against the player Hunter. Using these attacks on an enemy just causes them to take damage. If you're defeated while controlling an enemy creature, it's no issue to simply target another and jump into control of the new enemy straight from there. In many cases, the enemies are far larger than the game's camera is equipped to handle, so your view gets a little obscured while controlling the church giants and the like.
This is most obvious when controlling Vicar Amelia, whose fur covers the majority of the screen. In these cases, however, we can just use the developer debugging camera to get a clearer view and appreciate some of her attack animations. Just before reaching the Nightmare Church, there's two enemy hunters which attack the player. Taking control of other hunters actually yields far more usable results. The controls are exactly the same as when using the player character, as long as you're locked onto a target at least. We have unlimited bullets and healing items to use here as well. And of course we can switch players with the other hunter if we like. I like the way the wandering madness scurries around under our control, especially when trying to avoid attacks from nearby enemies. This creature has no attacks of its own, except for their ability to fade out and disappear. For this mod, we need to be able to target enemies in order to take control, which means certain NPCs have to be attacked until they become hostile first. This way, characters such as Alfred become playable, albeit in a fairly limited capacity. Of course, we don't always need to trigger that indiscriminate hostility. Sometimes it's nice to take control of an enemy and play with their attacks while exploring the environment, getting up close with some of their friends. And in other cases, it's fun to trigger the hostility and then sit back and see who wins. I thought it would be fun to make Rom indiscriminately hostile, and then see how fast her little spiders turn on her. In the Hunter's Nightmare, these blood-drunk hunters are quite easy to control. They're also already on a team that makes them able to attack and fight these nearby beast patients.
Taking control of Ludwig, I noticed he actually has some sidestep dodges, which I'm not entirely sure I've seen him use in battle. Other than those, we only get access to some fairly simple attacks. With Maria of the Astral Clock Tower, we get access to her dodges and dual sword attacks. So as I'm sure you can imagine, there's a lot to explore, discover, and enjoy with this mod. I hope you found the few enemies I decided to show here interesting, but I plan on live streaming this mod and many others quite a bit going forward, and if I do make any new discoveries, such as unused attacks, I'll be sure to make a follow-up video covering those. In the meantime, if you did manage to enjoy this video, feel free to leave a friendly comment below or maybe even just hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already as I've always got something new I'm working on that I'd love to share with you all. You can find more ways to follow and support my work in the description and either way, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.